And like people always say, I don't know if it's just me, but this this cat been acting strange all day. Oh, now she moving. Both of them seem like they. I know they're brother and sister. Because they came from that storage that was behind. Well, that they came from behind the storage that was at my uh, Slidell apartment. But this, if I didn't know any better, this looks like Love Beyond Compare. And I noticed it yesterday, to be totally honest with you. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I think one of them is possessed. You know I'm in New Orleans. I was going to go down to the Mississippi River and send an offering out and pray for this stuff to change. And I couldn't find it. I could not find it. I could not find, they say it's an area where 18-wheeler trucks and all these people drive down there and sit at the Mississippi, and I couldn't find it. You know how them Hispanic people do a Caribbean. When somebody die, they put the flowers on the water and let it float on out. I felt led to do it. Had on my little black head wrap, child. And my red, uh, had on my red tights because red is root chakra and it has everything to do with stability, financial stuff, all of that good stuff. And I, I need a, I need a miracle. So I went out there, I was looking for, for the mommy water. That's what they say to go down to the mommy water, take her the flowers. So I went to Dollar Tree and got us some stuff. Oh, that's what I need to do. Go to Dollar Tree. I'm going to back and get the little stuff out. Cause, uh... But ever since I went down there, these cats, these... they ain't been, they've been acting different. And now they acting grown. They was over here kissing like grown people. Y'all, that's incestuous. That's incestuation. In situation, yeah, the police came right after I made that first video. They knocked on the door and they all because see, the door would pull down so far and then it gets stuck real bad. And I bought some canola oil, a uh, spray can from um Dollar Tree yesterday to see if that would help. <sighs> My skin is dry to see if that would help. Lifted so he couldn't get it lifted. But anyway, four cops, two white men, a black guy, and a young lady. They were so nice. And everybody looked good in their uniform. Shout out to y'all. Thank y'all for being so nice. Did nobody, did nobody put their knee on my neck or nothing like that? I didn't get shot in the U-Haul. Oh, thank you. I felt that. You can't play with it. Y'all know you can't play. Did y'all feel that? I felt that. Because what I am going to tell you, I've been going through this homelessness thing since 2015. No, about 2000. Yeah. Yeah. Since around that time. Been going through it. And um, rent is too high. When you're single and you don't get taxes every year. And you're not, you know, you you don't have anybody to share your bills with. It's a slippery slope. And I just, I can't bring myself to, well, I have gone to live in them ghetto places. And I walked into the worst roast infestation over there in East Point. I said, I'm going to go find somewhere that got $500 rent. Baby, took that U-Haul back. I came back to that house open the door and I could not see the the crack in between the door where the little nails and stuff are roaches roaches big roaches little roaches 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 up and down the inside baby I came in that house 
I sat on that sofa and I bust out crying. Then at night, it used to be a rat. You know, I forgot about this. My life is such a book. I got to write this. At nighttime, I had a box of unopened saltine crackers. Premium, whatever the name of that place is. The regular, you know them little long things of the saltine crackers. Do you know a rat ate into one of the corners of that unopened box? And ate into them crackers and was coming back for them crackers. I stayed there about two years. No, not two years, two months. Or was it two weeks? I can't remember. It's all a blur. Because I had lost my car because I was working for Spasadale in Atlanta. Spasadale is a. This was before Massage Envy and all those little places got popular. You know, you have your top-of-the-line spas, which are usually resorts. Then you have your hotel spas that are your luxury spas. So that's where the rich people, the wealthy and the well-to-do, that's where they stay. That's how you get to meet celebrities uh, if you're working in the spa there. And then after that, you have spas like uh, Spasadale and um, Natural Body. Uh, that other one is uh, Woodstone something another. They're on a level I would put above Massage Envy and um, I think it's Massage Heights or whatever because I worked at Massage Envy for a couple of months. And I couldn't make $100 in a day. I could not. And I would be so freaking tired. I worked on so many people. I did that thing. I think I may have been there two weeks. I can't remember. But I was doing back-to-back -back massages from the time I got there to the time I left. And I wasn't taking any days off. And my body really told me go somewhere and sit down. I had to go somewhere and sit down. Sit down. But yeah, I used to work at uh, Massage Envy and could barely make $100. And so uh, places like Spasadale and Natural Body, you can make about what you make at Taco Bell or something like that, to be totally honest with you, if you're single when they get through taking out all of the taxes. But if you go to your luxury hotels, you can come on up and make, uh, you might, well, it depends on how luxury it is. Like five star St. Regis, there's only at one time there was only like 12, 13 St. Regis in the whole entire world. So it's a very um, exquisite spa. And you're going to pay about 200 just to walk in the door. And if you come to the spa, you're going to pay about 200 on from a. Now, I don't even know if they offer a 30 minute at St. Regis. I can't remember. But uh, I worked as the first day I worked over at St. Regis, I made six hundred dollars in my first day, and I wasn't even tired. My back wasn't even hurting. But anyway, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I get lost because it's so many thoughts. One thing begets another thing. What was I talking about? Oh, the police came to get me out of the truck, and they just wanted to come and tell me to move the truck. I don't know why it took four police officers and I don't know why they had to be as careful as they were. I guess if you want your life. Because it is a U-Haul. You don't know who's in there and the door is halfway open. And with so much stuff that it, I guess that's why. Because I was like, why are they tripping? Just pull the door open. And the door was to the point of where <clears throat> it'll come down to a certain thing and then I about maybe down to a foot, I guess, or two. And then you can't lift it. So I was trying to lift it. I had to spray some canola oil on it. Baby, I went to Dollar Tree and got some canola oil to spray on the things on the door so I can get the dough up and down. Got the dough. This is life in a U-Haul, by the way, part two. Got the dough open and um, just started telling the police my story. And I was trying to tell it in a nutshell, but it's hard to because the story is so extensive. And you don't tell anybody because... There's so much room for criticism. Nobody wants to be criticized after all of this. And then 
I'm going to be honest with you. I struggle with that whole church system. And that's why I'm going back to get my uh, certification to deliver folks from this uh, church spell that many of us have been under. I've been living in a systematic, uh, I guess you could say that systematic poverty system where they, if you go sign up for food stamps, I've never been on welfare because I don't have any kids, but if you go for food stamps, Medicaid, Medicare, all of that, if you make, you got to make, <clears throat> you can only make $1,200 a month to get Medicaid. Last Friday, I visited a very good therapist. Shout out, to Scott. I did my first therapy session with him, and I'm like, I finally found one. And then he said, I can't take you anymore because you're not a, your Medicaid expired as of December 31st, 2023. And it also cuts out my social worker, Zaina, who I said in the last thing she was calling me to check on me. Um, they've been, oh my God, I think it's called absolute care. But it's a system that the government, I guess, has come up with where they're helping people. So bottom line, I'm, I'm a perfect candidate. If they see that you've been in the hospital a few times, they reach out to you on the phone and they work with you in getting a a primary um uh, I'm tired. I need to I need to sit down for a minute. I need to go back there and pack this stuff in the car, but I am so tired. I am so tired. I I haven't had a night of eight hours sleep and four hours laying around in a minute and I I don't look like it but I keep forgetting that I got some medical stuff going on that they're looking at and I've been dealing with extreme fatigue since the stroke and it's oh god my eyes itch. I don't know what they're putting out there in them chemtrails or whatever but it got my eyes just itching like it used to do but um here's my cat now she hey you which one are you and got boogers in your eyes. Don't you be getting on my camera with no boogers in your eye. Uh -huh. The book out your eye. Get that book out your eye. Got this one. And I got that one. Spirit ran away from home. When I rescued a baby cat. Is that you? No, you are. No, you are. Uh, this is Barge. DeBarge. Because he barged into my life. We were sleeping on the U-Haul at the lofts at Canterbury, which are the places that I um, was evicted from. Shout out to Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie was the most wonderful. She was beautiful. And she told me that she didn't know when the sheriff was coming. And the only reason she filed... Um, I got behind on November. I got behind on November's rent because I failed January 31st. And when I failed, I positioned my body and held my arm a certain way so that I could hit the ground without, you know, hurting myself too much. Like I just like I know how to fall. You know, when you're a massage therapist, it gets to be we just But um the way that I fell, I hit the side of a sidewalk which was really sharp. And like if you're going through a path between two packs of grasses, that's how it was. So I hit the side because there was some uneven pavement there. Really, it's a lawsuit, but I'm going to let that go. It's some uneven pavement on the walk. I was walking. Actually, I think I had ordered a pizza and was walking over to Pizza Hut to get my um, pizza, three toppings for $7.99 or $8.99. That's a blessing. I used to get that a lot. Yes, honey. Three top and medium for eight ninety nine, And I would walk over there and get it because it was across the street from my apartment. But anyway, I fell and when that fall sliced my, um, I can't even think of the proper name of the muscle. 
my uh, bicep though basically which would be on this right shoulder and I believe it did more than that because I'm one of America's best therapists because all up in my collarbone um, all of this right at my pecs the insertion or the origin whatever is up here on my pecs down my side different places in my arm it was a mess and I thought to myself I didn't know I had sliced it and I went to the hospital to get an MRI and um, they can't give you one you have to when you have Medicaid you have to be referred uh, to a osteo, osteo uh, whatever you know the bone doctor Oh, I'm tired. I can't think like I want to, but um, and that's the that's the only part of the stroke. You can look at me and see me walking straight, but my words they come through, and I can't get the sentence out. I can, I can speak, but being able to formulate the order in which the words are gonna go can be real difficult sometimes but I've been using everything as a healer that I know to use like number one first and foremost there's a mosquito in here I have O positive blood I don't know if y'all know it but if you have O positive blood you are primed to get bitten by insects so they would tear you up honey I had to get that insect but anyway, um, again, and then some of this be me just talking too much. I'm taking a break from packing. I, w I wanted to be through by 12, but I'm tired. Oh, I'm tired. And the reason why I didn't finish turning this U-Haul in, because when you don't have a car and there's no bus or train system in your area, which New Orleans should be ashamed of that. And I am convinced that places like New Orleans, uh, ain't nothing between New Orleans and Slidell, but Lake Pontchartrain, they could have built, and it ain't real deep. I hear it's only about 20 feet deep, if it's that deep, but it's wide. It's so wide until I thought it was like the Gulf of Mexico when I saw it, because it's water as far as the eyes can see, Lake Pontchartrain. And, um... Actually, I, I met a man at one of my doctors. Matter of fact, it was at the osteo... Why am I about to say osteoporosis? That's a disorder or disease or whatever. Orthopedic. Duh. When I was at the orthopedic surgeon's office, there was a security guard there by the name of... His name was Harrison. And he heard the lady call my name, Harrison. And he, you know, wanted to go into that hole. You know, Shreveport. I'm in Louisiana your peoples but I was um, I had a reading back in 2015 and I was told that my great 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 grandmother third grandmother all the way back on my father's side was the person that's been working through me all of these years in the actions of uh, gifts and healing so that was when I was first tapping into uh, information about ancestors and so um, with that, I've known and I can feel her so I get closer and closer to her um, and know when she comes. And there's another one that comes through that's an older lady as well. Now, I didn't jump to talking about spirit guides. There's another one that comes through a lot um, and she speaks, she's an Indian. She's a hundred, I don't know what kind of Indian. Um, I thought I heard something in my spirit one day and I started researching it, but as of today, I don't remember. It was something that starts with an M that I had never heard of. So it was a Mohawk. I think that's a one too. But anyway, uh, I heard it in my spirit and I actually found the name in the dictionary. But it's just another one of the things I haven't finished doing because it's not in the place of perfection. Um... Yeah, but I hear an Indian lady, like I can be speaking in tongues or praying in tongues and then she'll start coming through very heavy. And it, it's, um, it, it shifts from tongues to, I believe it's uh, channeling. And again, 
you know, my, my message is for Christians. Well, it's for people who are interested or stirring or visited or a part of the occult practices, which means anything outside of Christianity. And I absolutely hate the fact that it's named occult practices because it's a trigger word. I don't want to be grouped with it. Um, you know, when you think of a cult, the first thing you think is cult, you know, and, uh, you also think ungodly. If you, if you got any kind of Pentecostal church in you, when you hear occult practices, you hear that ain't God. You better put that mess down the blood of Jesus. You hear all of that. So I had to go through some things for spirit to uh, enlighten me about what all that was. Matter of fact, one of the times that I can recall that it happened that the Indian lady came through, I was driving lifts somewhere around that Dallas area. Because when I moved from Atlanta to Shreveport, I was going to put on a, a Christmas production. And, um, and, and this is another thing. This is tripping me out. My mom's rash is on my neck. And I, I dealt with her rash maybe when I was 14 for a hot minute, but my mom had terrible, terrible issues with skin and eczema on her neck, in her elbows, knees, behind the knee, where everybody has them. My brother Tim ended up inheriting that from my mom and he has... I don't know if he still does. I was just praying for him this morning about this. But he had the whole alopecia spots in the back of his head. And uh, once I took custody of him, I started making him keep it. Uh, I can't even think the name of it. In a very, very, very short cut. Uh, skin fade, I think it's called. But anyway. Um, and then I started juicing for him, I started coming up with natural remedies for for it, and um, I know uh, artichokes, not artichokes, asparagus was one, parsnips was one, and I'm talking about stuff to put in a juice. So I would make my base juice with a base for me on a, on a juice is your greens, um, spinach, kale, or both. Um, or some seaweed or something like that. But I, I usually do kale. And then I do pineapple to sweeten that up. And pineapple's great to, to um, settle the stomach. And then I do apples, gala apples, because that was the recipe on the back of the first juicer that I ever had. And so I learned that as a base of how to juice. And um, then I may add any other vegetable after that. And But for the most part, I would make Tim one that had greens and gala apples, parsnips, which look like white carrots, uh, and about three stalks of asparagus, and my pineapple, of course, um, and whatever you want, anything else you want to put there for taste, whatever. And he started drinking that. And um, I was working at Intercontinental Hotel at the time. Because I remember going to work and talking to different estheticians. Um, like my girl Dawn. Hey Dawn, what's up? Mm -mm 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 -mm. But anyway, talking to Dawn and I forgot the other girl's name. But trying to figure out what could I do naturally with his skin and reporting back to them the different things that I saw his skin doing as we were working to heal it. But overall, it's it's a hundred percent hardcore. Uh, you know what? It just stopped my thoughts that I'm sitting on here making YouTube videos and I'm homeless. I am sitting in the U-Haul. I need to be trying to find out where I'm going to lay my head tonight after I turn this you all in. That part. All right, y'all. So I'm going to go. Let's just say this was part two. We'll finish the rest later. Bye.